Okay, so today, I just did a little preamble with everybody around the table. Everybody's around the table again, finally. Uh, we have been in a COVID situation in uh, our country that required us to accommodate uh, and treat it in the manner in which we've been instructed to. So we kept from gathering for the sake of one another's health. Uh, we're going after it again because the, the, the surge that was occurring that was necessitating that has subsided enough for us to be able to do this. So we're going to read, uh, we're going to go on to chapter 7 of Teachings for Victory, volume 5. The, the, the uh, Go Show is the treatment of illness. Uh, and again, this is only going to take portions of the, of the Go Show, so I'm going to read the whole Go Show. But before I start to read the Go Show, the, the, uh, President Kata has subtitled his lecture on this Go Show, Dispel the Darkness of the Times with the Supreme Human uh, Philosophy of Humanity. And I really always find all of this kind of spooky, weird in keeping with the reality that I'm experiencing and perceiving in this moment. Uh, I'm not about history I'm talking about today. I mean, what's happened since the last time we were together? All kinds of shit. Shinzo Abe got assassinated for mm. God's sake, you know? The, 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 the COVID has raged on. Uh, China is completely upside down, predicated on all the logistics worldwide is all changing. The world is going through a process of deglobalization that will ne we'll never return to a globalized uh, uh, system again. I don't know if everybody understands how serious is the, the changes that are occurring right now are, but they're as serious as the time that Nietzsche speaks of in his, current, in his present day. Okay, and that's why it's also poignant for us, mm -hmm. because it's our job to carry forward the mission of the Bodhisattvas of the earth and help dispel this fundamental darkness, subdue it, mm -hmm. and bring to light the truth so that everybody can experience the same life condition that we do. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes that might, <laughs> I don't know if you but want you to. But you have also the telescope that can see the beginning of the everything. Pardon me? You have also the James Webb telescope. Oh, oh, oh so and, you see, right. So we have, we have, we have, we, we have new minds. beginnings that are in front of us. And, and, and the reality is that everything is in flux. Nothing mm. is constant. The only mm. thing that's consistent is, is change. Mm. You know, that's what the James Webb Telescope tells us more than in ever, ever, anything yeah. else. That yeah. everything, every moment to moment to moment to moment is going through birth, old age, sickness, and death. Mm -hmm. The 3,000 mm -hmm. realms in a single moment of life mm. pertain to all life. Mm. Mm. Pertain to, all, and, and we already know that all things mm actually represent or exhibit the aspect of life because of their association with living things and their ability to uh, uh, create a, a platform for living things to exist in. Okay, so there's no separation between you and the environment. That's part of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go on to then the Daishonin encouraging someone that has become ill to understand uh, what illness really is and what, what, what uh, uh, creates it. Okay, and then President Kate is going to give us a great le uh, lecture on this reality. So the treatment of illness starts on page 1111 of volume 1 of the writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin. I'm going to read the background first. Uh, it starts on page 1115. Everybody's with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this letter was the, the treatment of illness. This letter was originally thought to have been written in uh, 1282, but it now seems more likely that it was 1278. The month and day, and, and day of the letter is exactly the same as on the uh, letter written to Saman, commonly known as Shijo Kingo, which may very well be the letter mentioned in the first paragraph. Pardon me. This letter was a reply to Toki Jonin, who had anxiously written about the rampant epidemic. Okay, does that sound? Familiar? The rampant, ep yeah, COVID. Okay, he's writing. He's writing to the Daishonin about the equivalent of, hey, what the hell is going on with everybody getting sick and dying? Mm -hmm. The Daishonin first classes, classifies all diseases into two categories: physical and mental. 
Physical illness, he says, can be cured by skilled physicians. However, illness of the mind, he adds, is are more complicated because they're karmic, right? right? Those that arise from the three poisons can be treated for, with the Hinayana teachings, but those caused by slandering the correct or essential teaching can be cured only with the essential teaching. Now, what's the essential teaching? Is he talking about uh, 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 Mahayana Buddhism mm -mm. versus Hinayana? What's he talking about? Is he talking about the Lotus Sutra? Mm -hmm. No, what's he talking about? Namyoho <laughs> Rengekyo. Only Namyoho Rengekyo in this age mm -hmm. has the cap capacity to cure illness of the mind. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't read this Gosho, he qualifies what illness of the mind is. It's not like mental illness. You know, that would be inclusive, but any delusion mm. is illness of the mind because the mind has the capacity to ha perceive purity. The mind has the capacity to be in the state of Buddha, mm. right? Okay, so he's going um, uh, only with the essential teaching. The Daishonin uses this term to indicate the law of Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Sorry about that. That he says lies in the depths of the lifespan chapter of the Lotus Sutra. So again, when he's talking about the essential teaching, he's talking about his teaching of Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Mm -hmm. In the latter day of the law, he says, which is why it's his essential teaching of Nam Myoho Rengekyo and not something else. Uh, evil demons prevail attacking the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. That would be all of you as well as me. One would therefore expect the Daishonin tells Toki Jonin to find more victims of the epidemic among Nichiren's followers than among the believers of the other schools. However, he adds, there is less affliction and death among Nichiren's followers. So he's saying, using the proof of actual fact based on society in general, while some of us may be suffering and we're suffering for, for reasons of our own karma, we collectively are suffering less than those outside our group our understanding. In closing, the Daishonin points to the way to end the epidemic, which would, could only be from Daimoku. The only way to do so is to demonstrate clearly that this teaching of Nam Yoho Rengeko is supreme. How would you do that? By getting the epidemic and then curing it yourself? No, by every day your life demonstrating the power of your life, this is called the proof of actual fact. Okay, other times some people call it benefit. Okay, but he says this teach he, the only way to do so, in other words, how do you eliminate the epidemic? Only by proving to the non believers the correct teaching. That's the only way they can be cured because only they can cure themselves in reality. Okay. In closing, the Daishonin points to the way to end the epidemic. The only way to do so is to demonstrate clearly that this teaching of Nam Myoho Rengekyo is supreme. By this, he means participating in and winning public debate on the relative superiority of the Buddhist teachings. Then he clarifies the difference between the 3,000 realms and a single moment of life expounded by Tentai and Dingyo and what he, what he himself expounds. He identifies this doctrine as Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Okay, so he's basically saying Ichin and Sanzen in the latter day of the law is the Daimoku Nam Yoho Rengekyo. All right, so I start, go back to page 1111, the treatment of illness. I start <clears throat> by saying, Reply to the lay priest Toki, Nichiren. I have received the unlined robe you sent me through the offices of Samen. Please inform all of those who sent me various offerings that I have received everything he listed. I also wish to acknowledge receipt of the various offerings from the lay priest Ota shown on the list you made. I have written the other part of the teaching I will discuss here in my letter to Saman. I hope you will ask him to show it to you. Your letter says that the epidemics are raging all the more fiercely. Think about now when I'm reading to this, reading you this. The illness of human beings may be divided into two general categories, the first of which is illness of the body. Physical diseases comprise 101 disorders of the earth element, 101 imbalances of the water element, 101 disturbances of the fire element, and 101 disharmonies of the wind element, a total of 404 maladies. These illnesses do not require a Buddha to cure them. Skilled physicians such as water holder and world carrier or and water carrier, Javika and Pian Chu Chu E uh, prescribe medicines that never fail to heal phys uh, physical sickness. 
The second category of illness uh, is illness of the mind. These illnesses arise from three poisons and are of 84,000 different kinds. They are beyond the healing powers of the two deities and the three aesthetics of Brahmanism or the six non-Buddhist teachers. Medicines prescribed by Shin Nung and uh, Huang Ti are even less effective. Illnesses of the mind differ greatly in severity. So what he's done here, he says, these kinds of illnesses, these are all great uh, healers, evidently, that he's saying this kind of illness couldn't be even healed by these dudes. All right, going on to the second paragraph, second column. Illnesses of the mind differ greatly in severity. You can either be a little bit deluded or you can be really deluded, okay? The 84,000 kinds of illnesses of the mind that arise from the three poisons and that afflicts ordinary people of the six paths can be treated by the Buddha of, the, of Hinayana and the, his teachings in the Agama Sutras or by the scholars and teachers of the Dharma Analysis Treasury Establishment of Truth and Precepts School. However, if these Hinayana practitioners in following their teachings should turn against the Mahayana, or even though they may not oppose Mahayana, if, if uh, the Hinayana countries think themselves equal to the Mahayana countries, the people will be plagued by sickness. Why? Let me just say that again. Uh, the, the, the illnesses of the mind that arise from the three poisons and that afflict ordinary people of the six paths can be treated by the Buddha of, the, of Hinayana and his teachings. In, would they still be talking about Shakyamuni? Because no, he's characterized as different aspects, okay, in different ways through the, different, through the various sutras, okay? Uh, can be a, a treated by the Buddha of, the, of Hinayana and his teachings of the Agama Sutras or by the scholars and teachers of the Dharma Analysis Treasury Establishment of Truth and Precepts schools. This is all Hinayana schools, right? However, if these Hinayana practitioners in following their teachings should turn against the Mahayana or even though they may not oppose Mahayana, if the Hinayana countries think themselves equal to the Mahayana countries, the people will be plagued by sickness. Why? Because the teachings that might have been able to help them, the Hinayana teachings that might have been able to help them, will no longer be effective due to the severity of their slander because they have slandered the correct teaching by thinking that they're equal to the correct teaching. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You can't compare Hinayana to, to Mahayana Buddhism. The Lotus Sutra is Mahayana Buddhism. Okay, and there is no greater teaching than the, than the Lotus Sutra. So Mahayana is always considered by people that understand the correct teaching to be superior. That's why Tentai did what Tentai did, and Nanye told him about all the, it goes all the way back to Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu and all those dudes, all right? Mm -hmm. So he says, if one attempts to cure such illnesses with Hinayana Buddhism, they will only become worse because you're relying on incorrect prayers rather than listening to the sutras and mm -hmm. having faith in what they teach, which is to move on to Mahayana now that you're grown up. They can only be treated by the votaries of the Mahayana sutras. Even within the Mahayana, if adherents of the flower garland, profound secrets, wisdom, Mahabharachana, and other provisional Mahayana sutras confuse the inferior with the superior and insist that the teachings of their schools are equal to the... Uh, pardon me, are equal or even surpass the Lotus Sutra. And if the ruler and others in high positions come to accept their assertion, then the three poisons and 84,000 illnesses will, uh, will all arise. Then if those followers who try to cure these illnesses with the provisional Mahayana Sutras on which they rely, the sicknesses will become all the more serious. Even if they try to use the Lotus Sutra, their efforts will fail because although the Sutra itself is supreme, the practitioners are persons who hold distorted views. Now, did you understand what that just said? Mm -hmm. What did that just say? They don't have a correct understanding. Exactly. The bottom line is that if what we just talked about in Hinayana versus Mahayana generally is true, mm -hmm then the lesser teachings of Mahayana would apply to the supreme teaching of the perfect teaching of the Lotus Sutra and the Nirvana Sutra in an equal fashion, okay? Also, once again, 
<laughs> you would be create, committing slander mm -hmm. if you were somebody that believed in Mahavrachana Buddha and <laughs> didn't listen to the teachings of Tintai and the Lotus Sutra, all right? Okay, so, because you hold distorted views, you can't even use the Lotus Sutra as like a backup because you really don't believe it or you would have already discarded those other teachings. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Further, page 1112, first column, first full paragraph. Further, the Lotus Sutra itself is divided into two distinct categories, the theoretical and the essential teaching. Now, this is really important stuff because now we start getting into Nietzsche and Buddhism and what's the difference between the different schools and the correct understanding and the incorrect understanding. Mm -hmm. And there are no such schools at the time he's writing this. But he is laying down some stuff that established what is a correct school and what is an incorrect school. Mm -hmm. So if the school, if the Nietzschean school believes in the efficacy of the first 16 chapters as being equal to the efficacy of the second 16 chapters, no good. Mm -hmm. You just now blew the efficacy of the entire process of faith in the Lotus Sutra because you don't have faith in the Lotus Sutra of the latter day of the law. That's Nam Yaho Rengekyo. That doesn't come until chapter 16. Can't be revealed anywhere else. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Did you understand everything I just said? Mm -hmm. All right. Further, the Lotus Sutra itself is divided into two distinct categories the theoretical teaching and the essential teaching. One is as different from the other as fire is from water or heaven from earth. So he's saying they are not even close to being the same. <laughs> the difference is even greater than that between the Lotus Sutra and the sutras that preceded it. Okay, everybody's listening, right? Mm -hmm. These sutras and the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra are certainly different, but still they have some points of similarity. We know that. Among the eight teachings expounded by the Buddha, the perfect teaching of the earlier sutras and that of the theoretical teaching are similar to each other. That's why the people of the other schools are thinking it's okay, it's, it's close enough. No, 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 no. It was continued to be refined and defined for the sake of perfection. And when you're not embracing perfection, when it's been a provided to you, you're not doing things correctly, mm -hmm. all right? He says, when the Buddha expounded the pre-Lotus Sutra and theoretical teachings, he assumed different guises, such as the inferior manifested body, the superior manifested body, the reward body, and the Dharma body. That's what I'm saying. He took on various different kinds of elements of distinction that they can that the Buddha of this or the Buddha of that. They're still talking about Shakyamuni because there's only one teacher of those sutras, get it? Mm -hmm. But they're considered different elements. That's why there are different schools, basing themselves on the different aspects of those different, okay, manifestations of truth. Okay, it says, uh, he assumed different guises such as the inferior manifested body, the superior manifested body, the reward body, and the Dharma body, yet he invariably depicted himself as having attained enlightenment for the first time in this world. So no matter what aspect he was qualifying, he was still qualifying it as I'm a teacher that attained this perfect perfection of wisdom for the first time in this lifetime, right? He says, the difference between the theoretical and essential teachings is that in the former, the Buddha is described as having first attained enlightenment during his life in India, while in the latter, he is the Buddha who attained enlightenment in the remote past. Okay, this difference is like that between a 100 year old man and a one uh, and a one year old baby. The disciples of these two Buddhas are also as different as fire is from water to say nothing of the difference between their lands. One who confuses, one who confuses the essential teaching with the theoretical teaching would not have the sense to distinguish fire from water. Yet Nietzsche and Shu does not make that distinction. So I guess Nietzsche and Daishon had just kind of dissed you guys to the max. All right, I will say it again. This is what he says about how much sense you have to understand the correct teaching. Those of you in Nietzsche and Shu and all the 40 other schools that don't believe and understand the Daishonin as the original teacher and, 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 and praise Shakyamuni. This ain't gonna get you anywhere based on what he's saying himself in many go shows, not just in this one. I'll read it again. 
one who confuses the essential teaching with the theoretical teaching would not have the sense to distinguish fire from water. So you don't have the capacity to understand what I'm talking about, and that's why what I say may confuse you. The Buddha drew a distinct line between the two in his preaching. He absolutely did, and all of the following scholars man, uh, you know, backed that up with their different commentaries on the sutras. The Buddha drew a distinct line between the two in his preaching, but during the more than 2,000 years since his passing, no one in the three countries of India, China, and Japan, or for that matter, in the entire land of Jampadipa, has clearly understood the difference. Only Tantai in China and Dingyo in Japan, who both appear where? This is why they're there. Where do we see Dingyo's name and, and yeah, it's on the Gohonzon. Mm -hmm. Now, why do those two get their names on the Gohonzon when he creates the object of devotion? Because they're, according to him, they're the only two that grasp mm -hmm. generally this reality of this difference mm -hmm. and the essence of the secret being in numberless major world system dust particle kalpas, which says we don't have, to, that mean, must mean that Buddha had already exists. Now, in this moment, not sometime down the road, okay? That's the only way you can get to 3,000. We have to have 10 times 10 times 10. You get it? You can't go nine times nine times nine, <laughs> all right? Okay, so he says, only Tentai in China and Dingyo in Japan generally differentiated between the two, because Dingyo made the great ordination platform, first one to ever do that. And the precept of the perfect and immediate enlightenment in which the essential teaching is distinguished from the theoretical, still remained to be clarified. In the final analysis, Tantai and Dengyo, okay, remained to be clarified. I think if you look up point nine, that's gotta be talking about the Daishonin himself, right? The term essential teaching has two meanings. The essential teaching of Shakyamuni's lifetime or the latter 14 chapter of the Lotus Sutra as, con as contrasted with the theoretical teaching of the first 14 chapters. I said 16 chapters, I was sorry. And the essential teaching of the latter day of the law or Nietzsche and Daishon is Buddhism of Nam Myoho Rengekyo. When the essential teaching is defined in this latter sense, the entirety, the entire 28th chapter Lotus Sutra is regarded as the theoretical teaching. Everybody understands that, right? Because we're in the fifth and 500 year period and beyond. Both here and in the following paragraph, the Daishonin used the term essential teaching to indicate nam myoho rengekyo As explained in the selection of time, Dingyo established the precepts for perfect and immediate enlightenment based on Shakyamuni's Lotus Sutra. In speaking of the precept that still remained to be clarified, the Daishonin indicates the law of nam myoho rengekyo So he's very cleverly talking about himself, had still remained to be clarified. He's the one that clarified it. That's what he's talking about still remain to be clarified. I had not yet revealed nam myoho rengekyo I had not made my advent, all right? In the final analysis, Tantai and Dingyo perceived it in their hearts but did not reveal it for three reasons. First, the proper time had not yet come. Second, the people had no capacity to accept it. And third, neither had been entrusted with the mission of propagating it. It is today in the latter day of the law that the bodhisattvas of the, her, of the earth will appear and propagate it as disciples of Nichiren. All right? The latter day of the law is the proper time for the spread of the essential teaching. So followers of Hinayana, Provisional Mahayana, and the Lotus Sutra's theoretical teachings will receive no benefit from their teachings, even though they are not guilty of any fault. Okay? You, you, you can't strike flint and get a fire with two pieces of you know, mud, mm -hmm. okay? The teachings can be likened to medicines compounded for use in springtime that are ineffective if taken in the fall, or at least not as effective as, as they were in spring or summer. What is worse, these people are deluded as to the relative superiority of Hinayana and Mahayana, mm -hmm. or of the provisional and true teachings. And because the rulers of Japan of previous ages believed in these sutras and erected temples and donated fields and farmland to the schools they espoused, if the followers of these teachings today were to admit the truth of my assertion that their teachings are inferior, 
they would have no way to justify themselves and would in consequence lose the support of the ruler. For this reason, they become enraged, slandering the sutra of the true teaching and doing harm to its votary. So he's saying they put down the Lotus Sutra and they try to persecute me and my followers. You understand? Right? That's what he just said. The ruler too, accepting the groundless accusations of the followers of these schools. In other words, the, the ruler's not a Buddhist scholar. Mm -hmm. It's the leaders, it's Rokan and all those dudes that are stirring all this crap up and saying Nietzsche's gotta be killed. Mm -hmm. And the wives were the ones that were saying Nietzsche's gotta be killed, right? The ruler too, accepting the groundless accusations of the followers of these schools accuses the votary, accuses Nietzsche because he wishes to side with the majority because he cannot bear to abandon the teachings honored by the rulers of, previ of the previous ages because he is simply ignorant or because he despises the votary of the true teaching. As a result, the gods who guard the true teaching, some as, such as Brahma and Chakra, the gods of the sun and the moon and the four heavenly kings, where do we see those? Brahma, Brahme, pardon me, it's Brahme, Chakra, the gods of the sun and the moon and the four heavenly kings. Where are they? Also on the Gohansen along with Dengyo and Tentai. Punish the country and the three calamities and seven disasters occur on an unprecedented scale. Hence the epidemics that have broken out this year as well as last year and in the Shoka era. Question. If, as you have stated, the benevolent deities inflict punishment on this country because it does harm to the votary of the Lotus Sutra, then epidemics should attack only the slanderers. Why is it that your own disciples also fall ill and die? Quest, uh, answer, your, quest, your, your question is reasonable. <laughs> Nevertheless, you are aware of only one side of the situation and not the other. Good and evil have been inherent in life since time without beginning. So what's time without beginning? Kuan, okay? The original state is Kuan. So what does that say? The fundamental nature of enlightenment and the fundamental nature of the devil of sixth heaven, the fundamental nature of darkness, the fundamental darkness have all existed in the original state. Everything that is, has all begun from this original state state it all is has everything in common everything is in everything in common is a result do you understand okay so again your question is reasonable N nevertheless you are aware of only one side of the situation and not the other good and evil have been inherent in life since time without beginning according to the provisional teachings and the schools based on them both good and evil remain in one's life through all the stages of the bodhisattva practice up to the stage of near perfect enlightenment Hence, people at the stage of near-perfect enlightenment or below have faults of some kind, but those at the highest stage, but not those at the highest stage. So in other words, great perfection of what you were becoming something, somebody supposedly that had no more fundamental darkness, right? That's what the Hinayan is saying. You're trying to become, a, you know, it's no different than Christianity, right? You're trying to become good enough to be a Buddha. That it's all about how good you are. That's what will make you a Buddha. And the Daishon is clarifying, no, that really doesn't have that much to do with it. Understanding the correct teaching is what makes you a Buddha. Mm. Okay? You don't have to be Jesus. He says, uh, pardon me, where am I? Okay. Am I over here? Okay. Where? Okay. Pardon me. This is reasonable. Hence, people at the stage of near-perfect enlightenment or below have faults of some kind, but those at the highest stage, uh, but not those at the highest stage. In contrast, the heart of the Lotus Sutra is the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, each in a sansan, which Tintai is the one that revealed, which reveals that both good and evil are inherent even in those at the highest stage of perfect enlightenment. That's why evil people can attain Buddhahood. Okay, that's why nobody is restricted from being able to achieve Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. The fundamental nature of enlightenment manifests, it, manifests itself as Brahme and Chakra, whereas the fundamental darkness manifests itself as the devil king of the sixth heaven. The benevolent deities hate evildoers 
and evil demons hate good people. Because we have entered the latter day of the law, it is natural that evil demons should be everywhere in the country, just like tiles, stones, trees, and grasses. Good demons are few because sages and worthies are rare in this world. One would therefore expect to find more victims of the epidemic among Nietzsche's followers than among the believers of Nimbutsu or priests of the true word sin and precept schools. But for some reason, however, there is less affli affliction and death among Nietzsche's followers. It is indeed mysterious. Is this because we are few in number or because our faith is strong? Question. Has there ever in the past been such a terrible outbreak of epidemics in Japan? Answer, during the reign of Emperor Sujin, the 10th ruler of the emperor of the, after Emperor Jimu, epidemics swept Japan, claiming the lives of more than half of the populace. But when Emperor Sujin had the people in each province worship the sun goddess and other deities, the epidemic ceased completely. Hence the name Sujin, which literally means worshiping the gods. That was before Buddhism had been introduced to the country. The 30th, 30th, uh, pardon me, the 30th, 31st, and 32nd rulers of the imperial line, along with many of their ministers, died of smallpox and other epidemic diseases. Prayers were once again offered to the same deities, but this time to no avail. During the reign of the 13th ruler, Emperor uh, Kime, Buddhist sutras, treatises, and priests were sent from the state of Pakche from Korea to Japan, as well as the, a gilded bronze statue of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of Teachings. The great minister Soga urged that the statue be worshipped, but the chief Moria, oh, this is going to be a good story. The chief minister uh, Mononobe and other ministers, along with the common people, joined in opposing the worship of the Buddha, saying that if honor were paid to him, it would enrage the native deities, who then would bring ruin upon the, on Japan. The emperor was still trying to decide which opinion to follow when the three calamities and seven disasters struck the nation on a scale never known before, and great numbers of the populace died of disease. The chief minister, Mononobe, seized this opportunity to appeal to the emperor. As a result, not only were the Buddhist priests and nuns disgraced, but the uh, gilded bronze statue of Shakyamuni Buddha was placed upon burning coals and destroyed, and the Buddhist temples were likewise burned. At that time, the chief minister con con contracted a disease and died, and the emperor also passed away. The great minister Soga, who, who worshipped the Buddha, also fell ill. The minister Moriya, the chief minister's son, declared that the three successive emperors, as well as his, as his own father, had died in the epidemics so solely because homage had been paid to the Buddha. Okay? Think something good's gonna happen to Maria? <laughs> Let it be known, he declared, that Prince Shotoku, Soga no Umbako, and others who revere the Buddha are all enemies of my father and of the deceased emperors. Hearing this, the imperial princes, uh, Anabe and Yakebe, uh, along with their ministers and thousands of retainers, all joined forces with Maria. Not only did they burn images of the Buddha in their temples, but a battle broke out and Moriya was killed in the fighting. For a period of 35 years after Buddhism had been first brought to this country, not a year passed without seeing the three calamities, the seven disasters, including ap epidemics. But after Mo Mononobe uh, no Moriya was killed by Soga no Umako, and the gods were overpowered by the Buddha, the disasters abruptly ceased. Outbreaks of the three calamities and seven disasters that occurred thereafter were for the, first, for the most part due to confusion within Buddhism itself. But these would affect only one or two persons or one or two provinces, one or two clans or one or two areas. Such disasters occurred because of the curse of the gods, because Buddhism was slandered or because of the people's distress. The three calamities and seven disasters of the past 30 years or more, however, are due solely to the fact that the entire country of Japan hates me, Nichiren. In province after province, district after district, and village after village, everyone from the ruler on down to the common people seethes in, ang seethes 
in anger against me, such as the world has never seen. This is the first time that the fundamental darkness has erupted in the lives of ordinary people, caught in the illusions of thought and desire. Even if they pray to the gods, the Buddha or the Lotus Sutra, these calamities will only be aggravated. But it is different when the votary of the Lotus Sutra offers prayers to the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. In other words, again, Daimoku is what he's talking about is the important thing. They can't just read the Lotus Sutra anymore and have it have any efficacy. In the final analysis, unless we succeed. So that's why he's saying, so in the final analysis, unless we prove that nam myoho Rengekyo is supreme by virtue of our own lives, we, will have, we won't be able to eradicate this suffering among all people because it's all sourced in this incorrect understanding of the truth. So we must show the proof of actual fact and become teachers and teach others this truth that we have been, that has been bestowed upon us. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In the final analysis, unless we succeed, and so this could be just as easily Daisaku Akeda or Jose Tota say in this paragraph. Right. It's the same encouragement they lay on us every freaking day Okay, is the same encouragement always mm. that Nietzsche was writing in the Gosho, not some priest of the 14th or the 16th or the 21st or whatever, mm. from the Gosho, as translated by scholars. The great teacher Tentai in his great concentration, again, I'll say in the final analysis, unless we succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme, these disasters will continue unabated. The great teacher Tentai in his great concentration and insight described the 10 objects of meditation and the 10 meditations, but no one after him practiced them. In the days of Myolo and Dingyo, some people practiced them to an extent, but encountered few difficulties because there were no powerful opponents. The three obstacles and four devils, we call it Sancho Shima, described in great concentration and insight, that's where it's qualified and clarified, it's done by Tentai, all right, will not arise to obstruct those who practice the provisional sutras because they don't threaten, they don't threaten, they're of no threat. Nobody's going to attain Buddhahood from practicing the provisional teachings. So three obstacles and four devils only appear when? Is that bad karma? Is three obstacles and four devils? That, that's why what I've been going through for four months, is that my bad karma? No. No, that's the valid, to, as far as I'm concerned, I could base it on the teachings. Okay, that's the validation. <laughs> you better kick its ass because that's why it's there. If it can defeat you, then you're a, you never were, you're full of shit. You never were what you said you were. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Don't be full of shit. Be the Buddha. But now each and every one has arisen to confront me. Okay. The three obstacles and four devils described in great concentration and insight will not arise to obstruct those who practice the provisional sutras. But now each and every one has risen to confront me. They are even more powerful than the three obstacles and the four devils that Tentai and Dingo and others had to face. So once again, as we face these three obstacles and four devils, I guarantee you it's very unlikely we will ever face them in the manner that Nietzsche and had to. But why did Nietzsche have to do that? Why did he have to have such a difficult life? So he, could be example. so he could be the living example to us to be able to his karma and our karma probably he's probably got a little bit lighter karma than me. <laughs> I'll admit that. Okay? So I'm probably gonna run into a little bit more difficult, serious kind of thing to figure out than him. Okay, but because of his example, I never give up. Mm -hmm. Because I certainly haven't had anybody take me to a beach and try and cut off my head. I haven't been exiled yet. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm saying though. This is the way you must view your own life. Your life in Nietzsche and Daishona's life are not different kinds of lives. Mm -hmm. They're identical. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to take my word for it, read the orally transmitted teachings. All he does is say over and over and over again, you and me are the same. You and me are the same. You and me are the same, all right? And that's why everything I'm experiencing, you should be prepared to probably experience it yourself. Mm. And if you're truly wise, you'll be able to perceive it exactly as I have. Mm. You'll be able to understand. It won't be a mystery. It won't be even thing. Anything you get. Well, I do get pissed off about it. 
but it won't be anything that you can't handle. Mm. Okay, it won't be anything that you don't defeat. This is really the key because the key is that you must defeat it, even if, it, you know, to die of a disease doesn't mean you were defeated. It means that the, the, that the disease was not able to conquer your spirit and that you were able to advance and teach with your life, based on your life, mm -hmm. to the last moment of your life. Yes. Then it doesn't matter about the disease. Exactly. Right? Because yes. something's going to kill you one way or the other. There's nobody that's eternal. Right. Right. All right? right. So he says, uh, outbreaks of the, where am I again? I lost my spot. Hang on. I'm all the way over here. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'm on the last sentence. That's why. I'm sorry. There are two ways. This is the important thing. There are two ways of perceiving the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can perceive it. Anybody can perceive 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. But they can't manifest 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. Do you understand why? What's 3,000 realms in a single moment of life qualify? Yeah. Well that, you're the, that, that Buddhahood exists, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. within the realm of your current existence, right? Mm -hmm. So you can look at it and understand it and think, well, that's cool. I can understand how that could be. That's how many people prior to Nietzsche perceived it. But he, he read everything that Tintai wrote. He wrote everything that Mielo wrote. He, wrote. he read everything that Dingo wrote. And he perceived himself. No, there's an actual, there's theoretical. There's a theoretical one. That's included in the first 14 chapters. Mm -hmm. But the one that's revealed in the second 14 chapters is actual. And what's actual each and his sons and based on? What's actual... To achieve actual Ichin and Sanzen, what do you have to be doing? Chanting. Chanting Nam Yoho Rengekyo. This isn't about some understanding. Okay? This is about your action in daily life that never ceases till the last moment of your life. I know, I roll my eyes when I think that too. <laughs> That's a lot of shit you got. Okay. So. There are two ways of perceiving the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. One is theoretical and the other actual. This is the distinction that I've shown in makes, period. My, my teachings and everything that's preceded it. What Tentai and Dingyo practiced was theoretical. But what I practice now is actual. Because what I practice is superior. The difficulty attending it are that much greater. Yeah. The doctrine of Tentai and Dingo was the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life of the theoretical teaching, while mine is that of the essential teaching. These, are, uh, uh, these two are as different as heaven is from earth. You should grasp this deeply when the time comes to face death with my deep respect, Nietzsche. And again, he's talking when he says, but while mine is that of the essential teaching, but mine is that of nam myoho rengeke which eliminates the need for the practitioner to attain the wisdom of the various 10 stages that are revealed by the Makashikan. Okay? We don't have to know everything there is to know in order to reveal the truth in our life and perceive it with our minds, which means we've attained Buddhahood. All right? It's so cool. The nobody is left out. Not even evil people. <laughs> Holy shit. Now that's pretty. I like that latitude. That's, that cut me some slack because it would take me a few lifetimes to become a non-evil person. <laughs> I've already created the appropriate karma. Deliberately created that appropriate karma. So, again, any of you that would know me for 50 years, by the way, last, last week was my 50-year... Practice. Yeah, so Michael Hans' birthday was on the 22nd. Okay, so we're going to go. I've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that it takes a while to understand it. Don't get impatient. Just keep after it, keep after it, keep after it, keep after it. And then reread and reread and reread what you think you already know. And you, you do already know it, but you don't know it at its deepest depths. 
and you don't know it at the unlimited capacity that you actually have that you haven't revealed yet. Okay, is that only is revealed through your actions. All right, so we start with the lecture on page uh, 102. Uh, and uh, I'll just start. Whenever my mentor, Second Soka Gakkai President Jose Toda, reminisced about his mentor, mentor Tanesaburo Makaguchi, uh, he spoke of him with great respect and deep nostalgia. Whenever he related how Mr. Makaguchi was arrested and died in prison from his beliefs, he wept tears of grief and burned with righteous anger. I can understand. In his novel, also entitled The Human Revolution, Mr. Toda vividly depicts, depicted Mr. Makaguchi. The first half of the novel tells how Mr. Toda's alter ego, Gan, worked in a printing company and living in a small room in a row house, encounters Mr. Makaguchi, and through the power of the mystic law, improves his situation and helps his neighbors do the same. In composing the novel, the image of Mr. Makaguchi pressing onward, taking the lead, and in introducing people to Nietzsche and Buddhism, in even the poorest back streets, and reaching out to families in all kinds of circumstances, remained ever present in Mr. Toda's mind. One can clearly sense his earnest wish that readers would come to understand the essence of human revolution so that they could leave lives of hope. Now, I've got this circled for a reason. Let me go back again. In composing the novel, The Human Revolution, mm. the image of Mr. Makaguchi that is created by the composition of Mr. Toda, always pressing onward, taking the lead in introducing people to Nietzsche and Buddhism, even in the poorest back streets and, reaches out to, and, and reaching out to families in all kinds of circumstances, remained ever present in Mr. Toda's mind. Okay, from a mentor-disciple relationship predication, what Mr. Makaguchi lived is what Mr. Toda learned. Okay, and then Mr. Toda lived and Mr. Ikeda learned. This is the way it is with all of us, and we all have various teachers, not one. The Daishonin says this is all about making everything your teacher, mm -hmm. okay? But the key is to advance. This remained ever present in Mr. Toda's mind, President Makaguchi's demeanor and his presence in his efforts and how he lived. One can only sense his earnest wish that readers could come to understand the essence of human revolution. What is then the essence of human revolution? First of all, he's what? So that they could live lives of hope. Okay? Do you understand what he's saying? He wanted them to practice as bodhisattvas of the earth so they could always have the understanding that they have the power to never give up and to always win. Just like President Makaguchi did, even though he died while he was in prison. Even though, you know, just like President Toda, even though he got sick, and, and didn't have a long life into his 70s or 80s. He barely got into his 60s, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's not about how long you live. It's what do you leave that remains after you're gone, mm -hmm. okay? And that is really a lineage of individuals. You know, that's our whole thing of our, we're bodhisattvas of the earth. We're all teachers, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, the novel depicts the starting point of the Soka path of mentor and disciple. It is chronicles, it chronicles how Gan takes Mr. Makaguchi as his mentor, becomes the general director of the Soka Kyoiku Gakkai, forerunner of the Soka Gakkai, and joins Mr. Makaguchi in resisting oppression by Japanese militaristic government during World War II. The flame of injustice, uh, continuing on page 103. On July 3rd, 1957, in the midst of the tumult of the Osaka incident, I flew from Hokkaido to Osaka to appear for questioning by police. By the way, this is the Osaka incident. Does everybody know what that is? That's the first time they busted Daisaku Ikeda. Okay, he went to jail for, they said that he had screwed around with the election. Okay, that they had done something that pissed off whoever and whatever they were all trumped up charges they were never true and he defeated them and this was his first big 
Huge up because he's been practicing as a youth division leader, right? Yeah. He's been doing the he's been doing the thing where I'm getting benefits. You guys get benefits, and all of a sudden he's falsely accused, put in jail, mm -hmm. and now has a criminal trial on his hands. Now again, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. This is three obstacles and four devils. At a boy, Daisaku. Okay, seriously, that's the way you should view it. That's what President Kate is trying to explain to us here. I flew from Hokkaido to Osaka to appear for questioning by the police. Mr. Toda met me at Haneda Airport in Tokyo where I had to change the planes. There he handed me a copy of his newly published novel. I read it avidly on my flight to Osaka. The passages that were based on his time in prison overflowed with his fighting spirit. They ignited in my own heart a, bl a, a bright flame of justice and determination to strive alongside my mentor to lead people to happiness. You got to find somebody that helps you feel what there is to feel. No matter how harsh the adversity, we can always find a way to make it into an opportunity for our human revolution. So what did that tell you? Yeah, it sounds good. What's it really mean? I'll read it again. No matter how harsh the adversity, we can always find a way to make it into an opportunity for our human revolution. We can always use it to create value. That is the essence of Nichiren Buddhism. Based on what? Uh, faith. Faith, but to, to what end? To overcome obstacles. That's right. By taking this harsh adversity and turning poison into medicine. Okay, that's how you develop Buddha wisdom. And that is how your faith continues to escalate. You may think you have faith at a level when you really don't have the kind of faith that I'm talking about. The way you get from point A to point Z is through the, uh, the continuous, continuous uh, 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 reinforcement from the, with the proof of actual fact. Right. The Nietzsche was told, it's up to us. We must prove this as a way to get rid of the epidemics. Yes. We must prove this as a way to advance your life. We must prove that this is the truth. We must perceive and understand it in a manner that we can express it uh, irrevocably, ir 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 und undisputably. Mm -hmm. We win all the, all the debates. Nietzsche and Buddhism is a teaching of hope and that allows us to powerfully and positively transform reality that's the proof of actual fact that's your supernatural powers being manifested you don't you think it's the piece of paper in the box no it isn't it's you buddha wake up nature and buddhism is a teaching of hope that allows us to powerfully and positively transform reality that is very powerful that means making something occur that would not have otherwise occurred our soka people's that was a dog, don't worry, nobody's being hurt. Our Soka People's Movement helped those who were suffering in the misery of post-war Japan in a society that had turned its back on people's welfare. The Soka Gakkai helped people stand up based on faith in the Gohonzon. And it's about time anyhow, don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> we're having a dog fight, I'm sorry. We're gonna end this now and finish next week. He says, Nichiren Buddhism is a teaching of hope that allows us to pe po powerfully and positively transform reality. Mm -hmm. Our Soka People's Movement helped those who were suffering in the misery of post-war Japan in a society that had turned its back on people's welfare. The Soka Gakkai helped people stand up based on faith in the Gohonzon and demonstrate the boundless transformative power mm -hmm. of the mystic law. The writing I will discuss in this chapter is the treatment of illness, a letter addressing the serious epidemics afflict, afflicting, affecting people throughout the country and what constitutes the fundamental means to free people from suffering. This letter brims with the Daishonin's profound compassion and determined spirit to relieve the suffering of all humanity. It embodies his, his powerful wish to communicate the essence of Buddhist philosophy so that people can lead lives of absolute victory. And so we'll at least stop here. So there's continuity to his lecture 
And uh, we'll start again next week on page 103, and we'll be reading the sections of the Goshev that are pertinent to his lecture starting there. All right? So until next week, thank you. Sorry that we've been gone as long as we've been gone. We won't be gone next week. We will be here hell or high water. See you then. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.